Hi, I'm Jonathan and I'm Principal Bassoon of the LPO. I'm Emily Newman and I am the bassoonist on For Your Future First programme. This was the first concert we did back in the LPO after um, everything had to stop because of the pandemic. So uh, a hugely emotional um, concert. And this was the, the first piece we rehearsed as an orchestra and also the first piece we rehearsed as a socially distanced orchestra, which was something that none of us had done before. So we had pretty much the, the full or as big as we could have LPO forces spread out across the festival hall. Um, so yeah, it's very exciting. So yeah, we're going to talk about the first movement, which I'm sure you've played many times. I've played it a few times. I think my first experience was the most memorable one, and it's the one I've kind of I've got um, a lot to talk about on that one. Um, when but, when was that? Where when? So that was at college when I was studying. Um, I was in I think even my first or second year. And it was Robin, Robin O'Neill was conducting. So that was the first time I properly met him as well. Yeah. Um, and we, we did a recording of the first movement on wax cylinders. Oh gosh. So we recorded it into a, like an old fashioned recording horn. Gosh, why? Wow. Yeah. Um, and that was, um, we were trying to, um, I think replicate the early Berlin Phil recording that was yeah. done in the same way and just like we're, we were experimenting with like the setup and things like that so um, fantastic and then have you heard it do you know how it sounded yeah we listened to it back on the day yeah um, just listening to um, yeah I think like because they put it they put it on um, as pretty like half an hour or so after we'd recorded it and it was strange yeah it was like the quality oh, was yeah Beethoven has such a special place in the heart of well wind players but bassoon players because he just knew exactly what to do for us I mean I always think that the sign of the greatest composers are the ones who knew what to do with the bassoons no offense to Bruckner or anyone else um yeah but yeah I think Beethoven is just especially Beethoven 5 I think from start to finish it's just so engaging for bassoon players. Yeah. There's, there's yeah, so I, always, much. I feel really like, I feel like it's, you feel really powerful as a bassoonist playing Beethoven. Absolutely. And not just, it's not just powerful in the terms of melodies. I mean, of course we have the melodies, but it's not like a bassoon concerto. It's the inner parts. I mean, yeah. my favorite part of this first movement um, would probably be the development section when we move into E flat major after all this kind of furious C minor um, music we've had before and these bassoons in thirds playing just this accompanying figure so you have the da -da 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 -da, and then just chords in the bassoons and it's just beautiful and I mean the, the scoring is so sparse here that you can hear the movement of the thirds so you're right it's it's a power you're kind of presenting this inner harmony um, and, you know, these thirds that start on a B flat and a G, these are such kind of open middle register notes on our instruments that you can just play, you can just play down the bassoon. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, it's because um, it's not, there's not a lot of, you know, solo exposed moments for the bassoon in this, but it's just as rewarding to play it. Yeah. Um, because of the harmonies you're just like and I think the whole orchestra is just creating this sound that everyone's contributing to no one like I mean I can't speak for how the other instruments feel about um, their parts but yeah it does feel like everyone's kind of um, contributing in the same way to the, just this beautiful sound but when I played it for um, the first time at college just kind of again just delving into that and having Robin had yeah, obviously so much to say about pieces as well. Um, and I think we spent the first day just experimenting with where we were set up um, to the recording horn to, and I think we were looking at pictures of the Berlin Phil and um, how they 
set themselves up around the recording horn everyone was just trying to play into that thing as much yeah. as possible and there wasn't a and it was you know for the solos the, the oboe I think we finished at the oboe solo and the yeah. oboe was like you know had to be close to the horn for that um <laughs> running it across to, yeah <laughs> yeah um I and I, I ended up sitting next to my friend in the violins um it was wow. just like just moving around all the time when the bassoons have that moment um the the theme on their own yeah um, it's quite a special moment um because the beethoven has given that to us yeah the whole orchestra um, and then you you're trying to kind of um live up to the the horn players as well like exactly having they they before um yeah so, i always find uh, find that bit funny because you are trying to have as much kind of presence and and be as majestic as the horns and it feels like you have a lot to live up to because there's such a huge especially playing it with an orchestra with the kind of forces that we had in the lpo um it's, it's a lot to kind of live up to the first kind of it's like the transition between classical and romantic um this 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 uh, beethoven five because he starts using um contrabassoon and um you know, slightly, I think, is this the first one he uses trombones? Um, uh, yes, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. You do kind of feel like you're, you have two roles, you're adding to the brass section, but mm -hmm. then you're this woodwind player as well. And I, I really like that. I like having kind of being part of the, having that versatility of the bassoonist. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's. Uh, and, uh, and you're right, the kind of um, addition, <laughs> addition of the contrabassoon and the trombones, it just widens this sound world into you know we know it's Beethoven we can it's it's purely the essence of Beethoven this writing but it's Beethoven extended um and that's yeah. probably why it, it's had such a powerful effect on listeners um from that point onwards and still remains probably the most popular symphony ever yeah I was going to be playing it actually in because I haven't played it for a while and in April last year, but that got cancelled. Um, but I was going to be playing Contra, which would have been a different experience. And fantastic. Yeah, yeah um, I you know was looking forward to that. But yeah. and of course, the the Contra bassoon only plays in the last movement of Beethoven Five. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it must be quite quite a, a different experience to playing the bassoon parts when you're you're playing all the time in every movement. Um, but I still think I, every time I speak to, to contrabassoon players and our contrabassoon player in the LPA, Simon, I think it's still such a thrilling piece. And when you do play in this last movement, it's such a good part. The use, as you say, you kind of, it's not only the use with this kind of trombone and brass chordal writing, um, it's also with the double basses, the bassoon and the contra, the, Contra bassoon and the double bass, this kind of unanimous thick sound. Um, it's really exciting to play as a contra player. Yeah. As yeah. well. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy. <laughs>